Hello again. This is Anne Marie with a Sergeant Art. Uh, really just doing a video for my students, but <laughs> I feel like I should say those things. I should also say subscribe and please like my video. Uh, I always forget to say those things because that's not really why I'm doing this, but I guess as long as I'm here, we might as well do it. Um, so one of the reasons I'm doing a class on, or I want to focus on, I, I'm, I'm trying an idea with my classes because I have many continuing students or at least a handful uh, to see what would happen if we do a series of things um, or we have a focus for the class because, uh, you know, the more you do something, the better you get at it. So the the first in March, the f it will only be four classes this time because since we are focusing on something that's not, you know, bore its death. But uh, the March class will be birds. And I hope I'm better at birds than I was last time. But I don't know if I will be. I don't really know if I'm going to have time to paint a lot of birds. But that's the point of the class. Is that for four weeks, we're going to paint birds together. And I'm going to do it too. And I promise you, by the end of that four weeks, we will be better at birds. That's just what happens when you practice. So I'm really excited about doing that with you. Even if I don't have time to be perfect before class starts. Um, and then in April, we're going to do landscapes and because that's another thing I really want to get better at and, uh, I'm, you know, have some camping and some boating trips this summer. I really want to get better at that. There's such beautiful scenery. <laughs> oh my God. I'm almost starting to cry thinking about how beautiful the scenery is around here. Uh, uh, especially in the summertime, it's just such a magical time to be here. So anyway, I really want to get better at rendering my, the landscapes that I see, but they're deceptively hard. Um, I think landscapes are good for beginners if you don't really know how to draw because it's just like, you know, oh, this shape of the sky and this shape of the mountain and this shape of, you know, it's just these kind of like, you know, I don't know, three to seven shapes that you're doing. But because of that, it's a lot harder to make it interesting, uh, I find. So, for example, um, you know, this scene here, it's just not as hard to make that interesting because there's just a lot going on. Uh, it's a, it's a, a quad at Stanford campus that I did on my reunion. Uh, uh, bu buildings that were not there when I was there, but boy, they're, they're beautiful. They're the engineering and sciences building. And there was an installation there of a woman who had done these, these huge balls of metal. Well, different sizes, but all, you know, like this one was huge. Um, about as tall as me, actually. And so there were 11 of them and they... They were symbols for all of the continents, I think. Shoot, I can't remember. But anyway, that was my rendition of that day of sketching during my reunion, which was so fun. But it's just easier to make that interesting because there's so much going on. This is harder for me to make interesting. Um, but I looked at, I'm just looking at some old paintings and kind of playing around here as I get back into my, um, the work I'm doing for uh, my show. Uh, and so I thought I would kind of, you know, use this as a warm up and also the opportunity to make a video about adding, you know, once you get your first layer down, because this was basically a first layer, you know, the reason this looks, the main reason this looks meh is because I don't have deeper value. I don't have pop, you know, I've got a lot of good mid ranges. I did a good job leaving some whites, um, you know, kind of a suggestion of snow up here. The sky's a mess. I drip paint, eh, whatever. Um, I, I would like to do more here, but I'm really liking this as a base layer for the flowers. Uh, and I think this probably needs to be darker because it's on the ground, but basically I just, I just don't have any pop. These are all mid range tones. I don't have my nines and my tens. Uh, so, um, I didn't know where to go next because I didn't, I wasn't looking at anything when I did this. I've just looked at this scenery so much and looked at photos of this scenery so much while we've had our house in Colorado for the last 10 years. So I just um, kind of made it up while I was painting with a new friend there who paints. And 
now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, I don't really know what to do next. I know it needs more value, but where does the value go and what do I do? So what did I do? I went to the internet and looked up a photo. Uh, that's what we have to do because we don't know how it looks. We can't make it up out of our head. So, um, you know, this is what artists do when they, when they're doing art, even, even artists that are doing art or characters from their mind, they are look at looking at references of gesture and posture. If it's, if it's a, if it's a form, you know, or, um, I, I don't know. I don't, I know I need some darker value, but is, is it here? Is it in here? Is it down here? I, I just didn't really know where it was. I, I was pretty sure it was down here, but I also didn't know what it would look like. Like what are the shapes of that darker value? I don't know. I don't know how to paint that. So I looked at a photo so I could see. Um, and with that photograph, then I can, um, you know, I can kind of fill in some of that. Now I have to get the photograph because it just realized that it is on the phone. And if I stop this video, that will be a shame. So I'm getting a different device so I can see the photograph and show that to you. That is the next step. Oh, and of course it's not loaded here. Dang it. Okay. So while I am waiting for that to sync up, um, I'm going to kind of do it by memory because I don't really care how it looks. I already don't like this painting. <laughs> Mainly because, you know, the real reason I don't like this painting, it, it, it's kind of fine. Um... I will tell you the colors of these are not right because um, the, the aspen at the top, they go first because it's colder up there. You know, they're experiencing more of the, of the, the morning and evening's coolness. So it would not make sense that the, that the reds would be down here. Um, you know, it should be because red is the last stage of the process. They go from green to yellow, orange, red, brown. So it would the, this color scheme doesn't make sense, which is why, you know, and I know enough. I mean, I had fun doing it kind of. It was all wet and wet and I dropped this paint in. I like how it stayed separate, but it just doesn't look right because the, the aspen go and grow, grow in groves. And so, you know, patches of them start to go and change. It's not spread out like this. So that's one thing I don't like about it. The other is this mountain doesn't mean anything to me. I didn't I didn't use this mountain or copy a mountain I wish I had. Um, there's a lot of mountains down there and they are very recognizable. And so it's just a shame that I didn't do that. But you know, again, all good information to know. Now I am much more careful when I do the shape of Rainier that it actually looks like Rainier because those of us who live here, we all know what Rainier looks like. So we don't want just like, like, what is this? You know, it might be Sopris, which is the main mountain in Carbondale, Colorado. But then this isn't really, eh, actually there might be places where this would be seen in front of Sopris. Hmm, I wonder if that comes... Thomas Lakes hike, you might see it. Hmm, that's interesting. I didn't follow that. Okay, so for this exercise, I should say for the second layer, we talk about building up in class. Well, now I'm building up. I'm doing my second layer. I am taking a pretty small brush. I am taking a number three round. Although, you know what I just realized? I have actually fallen in love with this really cheap number three round. I might be able to find it. I don't know what it, it's a little wider than this one, uh, but I can still get it into a point. Erg, I'm not coming up with it. I use my brushes too often. Um, okay, so I guess we will be stuck with this one so that you don't have to endure my searching. All right, so what I'm going to do is I have this paint here. It's nice and, oh, first thing I'm going to do is put an apron on. I'm definitely at splashing stage. Splashing is for sure 
a possibility. All right, so I am going to take this nice juicy paint and I'm going to make a pretty dark color. And I'm gonna practice on, or I'm gonna um, test it on this little tablet. So I'm gonna take some of this Prussian blue, kind of a lot maybe. This is when I often have my other palette next to me, which I actually may get, just because I can add those neutrals and, and frankly, they're kind of already in there anyway. Um, so I can add these neutral colors so that I can get darks because I don't think I'm going to be able to achieve it with this red and this um, blue that I have. Mm, that's pretty dang dark. It'll dry a little lighter because it's watercolor, but I'm, I'm down with that. So then what I can do is, so I have kind of a nice base layer here. I can spritz this again. That's was fresh out of the tube, so it's pretty wet. And then as you know, I'm not, I don't have very much paint right here. So I've just added a little more water, which is going to impact how dark it is. So let me add a little bit more, test it again. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Wait, wait, beep, beep, beep. Mm, 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 mm. See, this is the problem. I st stuck my dang brush in water for two seconds and I didn't dry it out and now I have to kind of do this again. Okay, that's good. Okay, so I have this, but I also have these and I can add them to this, uh, backwards this, and kind of, and that kind of changes up the color. Because again, this is a big space and it's gonna be super boring if I do the same color across the whole thing, right? I mean, maybe you don't know that yet, but it will be, promise, I, I promise you. So it's good to have a nice dark color that I can start with, but it's good to be able to just kind of like, let's just drop it into this blue and then do a little bit more of that. And then maybe I'll drop it in the red and come over here and drop it in the blue. And really what I'm doing is I'm just painting some darker lines because that's what I saw. I'm not being too particular about it. And I might be wrong. I might look at it later and say, oh, Anne-Marie, you really should have been painstaking about that. Now this one on the edge might bug me um, because it's right on the edge of the frame. So, cause we got to think about our edges. How are we approaching our edges? So I think I'm just kind of going to do that. Uh, soften that a little bit. Now, this is a great opportunity to, now I have all like hard edges here. This is a great opportunity to rinse off a bigger brush and kind of like flick it. I don't really care if I flick it on the painting, but, and then, cause you know, this, the other thing I noticed in the photo was this, the ground was much darker than I had it. I kind of liked these highlights, but we can't have it all lit. And this is, has a nice enough tip that I can go ahead and kind of come in here. Hmm. Now that doesn't look right because they all just look kind of like chopped off at the knees. <laughs> hmm. Not sure. Not sure what I'm doing wrong here. I wish the photo would pull up, but it's still not. Okay. So let's kind of soften this you know, that kind of hard line there might look a little weird. But I do think, you know, we would have kind of the back and forth of the light. So sometimes the light would be darker here. Mm, sorry, I'm not explaining that very well. So just give me a second because I'm noticing these. Now, this is a good place to use this three round to soften this because and I'm just, I'm dipping it and cleaning it and kind of squeezing it off because I actually can use it to keep making lines, but then lines that kind of blur off. And it's okay to, bl this is where the drawing information is good. It's okay to blur off here because that should all be in the shade anyway. And I don't really like what's happening there, so I can blur that off. And then I'm getting something that is approximating something 
Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm having a hard time talking and painting at the same time. I hope you find it humorous and then I don't have to worry about it so much. But you know, this is challenging for me because I don't, I don't know how to do this either. So, um, so let's just keep going this way and see what we think about, and this is where actually I really like to stand up because I like to be able, when you guys are like hunched down like this, it's, um, it's much harder to see that you're actually making progress because we're just too down into the minutia. And some of you are more into minutia than the others, but I know who you are. <laughs> I'm jealous because I wish I was into the minutia because the people who are into the minutia and get hooked, those are the ones who really have success. Um, okay, so now this is also a good place to, you know, I'm still not liking these lines, so I'm gonna squeeze this out a little bit, but I still want this brush because I want it the softer. This one is just too firm. And it's kind of, I don't know, I just want a softer touch because what I'm going to try to do is pull some of this paint up here on what would be the back side of the trees. Now, maybe you can tell why I didn't go all the way across. Can you tell? Do you know? Students, students, give it a guess. Give it a guess. Why didn't I go all the way to the end? I'm gonna give you a second to think about that while I fiddle around. Including Aspen have a lot of kind of bumps like that. Actually, this would be a nice time to go back to the round, but I need to wet it a little bit. It's a little too stiff. And a nice time to just kind of come in here. And now, you know, I've already added different colors. So, but I could, you know, go back in and add other colors. See, it's still wet, so I still have a lot of, and even this looked kind of funny, but I, I have a lot of flexibility now that things are still wet, which is why I didn't go all the way to the end, by the way, because I needed to work on it while it was still wet. And any of these spots that are kind of bugging me a little bit, I mean, in the end, I don't need too much of that for it to look like leaves, right? Like maybe if, I only showed you this much of the painting, you wouldn't know it was leaves. But if I show you the painting, you know that it's leaves. So, or trees. Uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> I made such a point and then I said the wrong thing. You know that it's trees. And then this is the kind of thing where I would come back in later with a pen and draw some stems and stuff. Yeah. So this is kind of like, frankly, kind of the tedious part. I have to, I only did like a quarter of it, you know? And so that I need to do like all the way across, but it's also when you kind of get in the rhythm of it, of making marks, of making random marks, of switching up your marks, um, it starts to, you know, something starts to come through. Um, now, the other thing is I needed to darken this, but look how just adding that layer of shadow kind of did that work for me. And now I don't know that I need to darken this green. I may not. It's not really, it's not really an autumn color, but, um, and so I'll probably kind of go over some of it, but I'm not as offended by it as I was when I started, even from just putting down this shadow. And you can see that there's lots of different colors, not only because I was using different colors on my palette, but also because I had different colors underneath. And like all of these golds and stuff, they will shine through the watercolor because it's transparent. That is the beauty of this medium. So, you know, we get a lot of different like colors going on there and some complexity. And uh, it's just, you know, from layering paint and all the work that's underneath it. So I just find it really beautiful. Now, the other thing is, you know, at the end, of course, I will be adding, uh, I might even add some white or some, you know, semblance of white so that I get some of these trees back. So even that, you know, I'm kind of covering them too much, but that's okay. You know, we're just going to build it up over time. And the final step of the buildup is the highlights, which is the best part. Uh, when you get to decide where, where do I, or the ink, where do I get, where do I need line more defined? 
Where do I need detail? Where do I need to bring a highlight back? You know, all of that we have tricks for at the end. So stay tuned, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Bye-bye.